The chain rule is differentiation's ultimate tool for finding derivatives of the composition of two or more functions. But what do we mean by composition? Well, take f of x equal to sine x and g of x equal to x cubed. Then we say that f composed with g is f of g of x, which in this case is equal to f of x cubed, which is sine of x cubed. Now let's take another example. Take f of x equal to e to the x and g of x equal to cosine x. Then again, f composed with g or f of g of x is equal to e to the cosine x. And notice that the order matters as g of f of x is equal to cosine of e to the x, which is significantly different. Now, the question is, what is the derivative of a composition of functions? To do this, we need the chain rule. Now the chain rule states that if y equals f of g of x or f composed with g, dy by dx is equal to dy by dg times dg by dx. And you'll get a grasp of what this means through examples. So take y equal to sine of x cubed. Then to find dy dx, we first need to see that it's a composition. So let's find f of x and g of x. And if we take f of x equal to sine x and g of x equal to x cubed, then we see that y equals f of g of x. So we can use the chain rule to find dy dx. But in the rule, we see that we need to find the derivative of y with respect to g. Now, how do we compute that? Well, we need y to be a function of g. And through your mathematical journey, you will have written y equals something. But actually, y is a function. And the correct way of writing it is y of x equals sine of x cubed. And since g of x equals x cubed, then y of g is equal to sine g. And this here is kind of the setup that we're looking for when trying to use the chain rule. So we have that dy by dg is equal to cosine g and dg by dx is equal to 3x squared. Then multiplying them together, we get dy dx is equal to 3x squared cosine g. And since g is equal to x cubed, we have dy dx is equal to 3x squared cosine x cubed. Let's now take another example, take y equal to sine x all cubed. Now we see that this is a composition because if we take g of x equal to sine x, then y equals g cubed. Then dy by dg is equal to 3g squared, and dg by dx is equal to cosine x. Then by the chain rule, dy dx is equal to 3g squared cosine x, and since g is equal to sine x, we get dy dx is equal to 3 sine squared x cosine x. Now imagine someone dropped down and asked you, what's the derivative of the composition of three functions? What about n functions? And to do this, we need the extended chain rule. Now suppose y equals f of g of h of x, or the composition of f, g, and h, then the extended chain rule states that dy by dx is equal to dy by dg times dg by dh times dh by dx. And it almost makes intuitive sense, as like normal fractions, the dgs would cancel and the dhs would cancel, leaving dy dx. And if we had y equal to f1 of f2 of dot 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 fn of x, that is the composition of n functions, then dy by dx is equal to dy by df2 times df2 by df3 times dot 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 all the way to dfn by dfx. And again, we see that all the fn's cancel out, giving dy by dx. So let's take y equal to cosine of e to the x cubed. Then if we substitute in h of x equal to x cubed and substitute in g of h equal to e to the h, then we see that y of g is equal to cosine g. Then dy by dg is equal to minus sine g, dg by dh is equal to e to the h, and dh by dx is equal to 3x squared. Multiplying them all together, we get dy by dx is equal to minus 3x squared e to the h 
sine g. Now we know that g equals e to the h and h equals x cubed, giving our derivative. So you see that we substitute in two functions such that every function can be written in a form that we can differentiate. And the next question is, which substitutions should we make to get it right every time for the chain rule? Now let's create a table with the left hand side being the function type and the right hand side being a pretty exhaustive list of examples. Now the first function type is polynomial. That is, if y equals f of x to the n, then sub in g of x equals x to the n. And it can also be x to the n plus x to the n minus 1 plus x and minus 2 plus dot dot dot. So for example, take sine of x cubed, then we would sub in g of x equals x cubed. e to the x squared, sub in g equals x squared. ln of 5x to the 5 plus x squared plus 1, we would sub in g equal to 5x to the 5 plus x squared plus 1. For tangent of 1 over x squared, we would just sub in g equals 1 over x squared. Now the next function type is trigonometric. That is, if y equals f of sine x or cosine of tangent x, then sub in g equals sine x or cosine x or tangent x. For example, ln of sine x, sub in g equals sine x. e to the cosine x, sub in g equals cosine x. Tangent of x all to the power of 4, well sub in g equals tan x. And finally, we have exponential or logarithmic. That is, if y equals f of e to the x or f of ln x, then sub in g equals e to the x or ln x. So for example, sine of ln x, sub in g equals ln x, tan e to the x, sub in g equals e to the x, and ln x all cubed, sub in g equals ln x. Now I'd recommend that you screenshot this table so you can easily access it as it can help you immensely in chain rule questions. Now the next thing I want to do is share with you my number one tip for the chain rule and that tip is to start deep and work outwards. And what I mean by that is to substitute in the most embedded function first. For example, say that you have y equal to ln of sine of x cubed. Then the deepest or most embedded function is x cubed, therefore sub in h of x equals x cubed. Now the second deepest function is sine of x cubed, but we write the next substitution in terms of the previous substitution we've already made. So in this case, we sub in g of h equals sine h. And again, we write y in terms of the previous substitution we have made. So we have y of g is equal to ln g. And we see that every function is in a form that we can differentiate. Then we have dy by dg is equal to 1 over g, dg by dh is equal to cosine h, and dh by dx is equal to 3x squared. Therefore, dy by dx is equal to 3x squared cosine x cubed all over sine x cubed, which is just equal to 3x squared over tangent x cubed. Now, the best way to get better at anything is through practice and examples. So check out our problem sheet in the description below, which comes with solutions with complete working. Now this rule is brilliant, but we need to prove it. We need to prove the chain rule. And the proof of this is actually quite easy and short. We know that if y equals f of x, then dy dx is equal to the limit as h approaches x of f of x minus f of h divided by x minus h. And pay close attention to x being the argument of the function here and h being the argument of the function here. Now let's take y equal f of g of x or f composed with g. Then we place f of x and f of h and let's now multiply and divide by g of x minus g of h. Now we can swap the denominators as we are multiplying and we see that g of x and g of h are the arguments in the functions. So this part combined with the limit is actually dy by dg and this part here is just dg by dx giving the famous chain rule. So the next time you come across your greatest calculus enemy or hardest differentiation problem, 
you'll know what to do every single time. Now, if you guys learned anything, hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe and head over to mathesy.com for problem sheets, notes, and more of my videos.